Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Half a day. Thank you all for joining us and participating in today's oversight. The Committee on Guam U.S. Military Buildup, Infrastructure and Transportation of Emina Trentai Quatrun, alias Aturan Guahan, hereby convenes this oversight hearing for the Department of Public Works. In accordance with the open government laws, the initial five day notice of the oversight hearing was disseminated to the community stakeholders and media partners on Tuesday, January 9th, 2018. With the 48 hour notice disseminated on Tuesday, January 16th, 2018. I want to thank the management and staff of the Department of Public Works for being here this afternoon, along with community st stakeholders and those of you at home watching. This oversight hearing will allow the committee to not only assess the Department of Public Works needs, but to better understand how the agency utilizes its resources while addressing the condition and performance of Guam's roads. Maintenance of Guam's roads and highways are vital to our growing economy and critical to a safe community. Without sufficient maintenance, roads lose their structural integrity and durability, causing serious damage to vehicles and in some instances may affect public access. According to the Federal Highway Administration, neglecting maintenance on deteriorating roads will only cost more over time. Every dollar spent on maintaining roads in good condition prevents the need to spend four to five times more to rehabilitate the same road that has been poorly maintained. With this in mind, there must be a plan moving forward, a plan that prioritizes Guam's highways and village streets, a plan that is measured with performance metrics and is cost effective with the use of resources, and most importantly, a plan that is followed through to its completion. Driving on safer roads are important to everyday people everywhere. I look forward to this afternoon's discussion and let us proceed with this oversight hearing. If I can invite the Director of the Department of Public Works, and I want to also recognize the Public Auditor, Senator Doris Flores Brooks, if I can also invite you to the table. And I, I also recognize that in fact you have some of your team members here and to all of the DPW staff and management, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Before I open the presentations, I'd like to recognize the presence of Vice Speaker Terlahi and Senator Morrison. Thank you very much, Senators, for joining us this afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, we will begin the overall presentation with a video presentation that was produced. I believe, Mr. Director, that you've had an opportunity to review this. Uh, that was produced by the Office of Public Accountability with regards to a recent audit that was completed by her office. And if you would like to provide open comments on those, opening comments on the, the video before we begin. Thank you, uh, uh, Senator Agan, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Vice Speaker Talahi, and Senator Morrison. Uh, your summary actually uh, is a good summary of what our audit is all about, that maintenance is, is very important. And rather than belabor the thing, I thought for the viewing public, especially those at home, to see this video. It's just four minutes, and it, it, it uh, captures the essence of the audit. So thank you for that. So if I could have uh, uh, the technical people uh, view the, uh, start the video. Thank you, Madam Honor. Village streets on Guam are generally maintained by the Department of Public Works Division of Highways. Typically, village street conditions worsen over time without proper maintenance. Research has shown that for every dollar spent on maintaining roads in good condition prevents the need to spend four to five times more to rehabilitate the same road that has not been maintained. According to a report released by the U.S. Federal Highway Administration, transportation agencies are facing increasing pressures from policymakers to demonstrate results, accountability, and transparency in managing highway assets. 
In responding to these demands, the appeal of transportation asset management becomes increasingly important. The division of highways demonstrates good management by using a pavement management system for its federally funded highways. However, for village streets, which are funded by the government of Guam through vehicle registration fees, liquid fuel taxes, bonds, or loans, the division of highways does not have an effective asset management strategy to protect and extend its life and ensure taxpayer dollars are utilized in the most cost-effective manner. Despite the development of the 2009 Village Streets Master Plan, or VSMP, the Department of Public Works did not take action to ensure the Village Streets Master Plan was regularly monitored and properly implemented. No top prioritized village street has been repaired since the VSMP's publication. We surveyed the top 10 and bottom 10 prioritized roads and observed that lower ranked roads appeared to be in worse conditions compared to those with a higher ranking. In addition, our assessment of a more recent listing of prioritized roads compiled by the village mayors indicated that these roads appeared in poorer conditions compared to the top 10 roads prioritized in the VSMP. This suggests that the VSMP may be outdated based on the current conditions of roads. Repairs of village streets are determined on a daily basis and rests on the Division of Highway Superintendent's discretion. This practice of prioritizing road repairs is subjective and may lead to using resources inefficiently. Performance measures were not established to guide day-to-day -day operations or to measure whether management is achieving its goals. Beginning January 2018, Public Law 34-44 increased the liquid fuel tax as much as 40% for village street repairs. It is imperative that DPW be accountable and transparent with the use of taxpayer dollars just as well as federal funds and ensure it is protecting the major investments into our village streets and highways. This would require leadership focus in adopting transportation asset management best practices for village streets just like it has done for Guam's highways. For more details about our audit, check out OPA report number 17-09, which you can find on our website at opaguam.org. You can also view more footage on the village streets we surveyed at our website. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Auditor. Did you have any f final comments as we proceed with the oversight hearing? We did note subsequently our, our uh, before, and we acknowledge that in our audit that uh, they have begun to develop some kind of uh, systematic plan. Uh, they have begun to identify and prioritize again some of the roads, but that was a, uh, at the closure of our, uh, our audit and possibly Mr. Leon Guerrero can speak further uh, to that. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Auditor. Uh, Mr. Leon Guerrero, I believe there was a specific request by the chair to see if the acting superintendent would be present. Who's the acting superintendent of the Division of Highways? Kim Blas. Is, yes. is he responsible for the nature of the discussion today? He should be here. I'm not sure where he's at, sir. Um, I, he was, I was with him this morning. Should, I'm not sure. He may be... I'm a little delayed. I apologize, but I, I, I fully expect him to be here. Uh, Director Leon Guerrero, because uh, he's going to be uh, in conjunction with yourself, responding directly to questions with regards to the nature of our discussion today. I will take a 15-minute recess, allow you to be able to communicate with Mr. Bloss and see if he can join us. Okay. Thank you.
This oversight hearing on the Department of Public Works is hereby reconvened. Thank you very much, Mr. Director, for calling in one of your key staff members. Mr. Director, I understand that you have a presentation. As you presented based on the topic matter disseminated with the oversight notification, I'll allow for the senators and myself to be able to ask questions and then we can continue on with your presentation rather than you giving the entire presentation and us reverting back. Okay, so Mr. Director, you recognize. Um, thank you, Senator Rogan, uh, Vice Speaker Terlahi, Senator Morrison. Um, as you said, uh, we, I have two, two different, um, and, but they're coordinated and parallel responses to to the Village Street Master Plan, um, and I, uh, they're both pretty lengthy. I'm not sure you, if you want me to go through. One is the, the letter I responded to, to the OPA uh, audit, and, and in that it has a lot of information. And again, you've, uh, in the letter that, that invited us to come to this oversight hearing, you've asked specific questions, and we, again, we've answered that. Um, uh, again, and that's pretty detailed. Uh, very good information. Uh, if you would like me to share it, I would be happy to read it. If you would rather... Um, we'll go with your, your initial presentation that you provided the committee. The, the letter, okay. Yes. Would you like... Uh, so I can read it then? Okay. Please proceed. Thank you for permitting the department uh, an opportunity to present testimony for this oversight hearing. Uh, I prepared responses to the items that uh, items you have identified in your letter, January 8, letter, uh, 20, 2018 letter. Sorry. Uh, the first question you, you uh, quest raised was uh, the pavement I'm sorry, management. Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. Director, if you can just identify the individual sitting to your left. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, and his title. Yeah, this is uh, uh, Joaquin Blas. Uh, he's the acting uh, federal highway, I mean, acting highways administrator. Um, so coordinates with federal highways as well as oversight over the local uh, highways. Okay. Thank you, Director Lemba. You may proceed. Sure. So the first uh, uh, item that you had in your, your letter was pavement management system and scheduled for routed secondary and uh, tertiary roads. Um, in response to the pavement management system and scheduled, the DPW has developed this system for routed roads only. The overall goal, goal was the goal of the pavement management system is for one, develop a, a system for Guam's routed road network, two, develop development of a ride quality uh, protocols and qu quality assurance checks for using inertial uh, uh, profiler equipment adhering to the American Society of Testing and uh, Materials or otherwise known as ASTM standards and Federal Highway Administration uh, long-term pavement performance uh, program guidelines. Three, collecting and reporting traffic volumes, vehicle classifications, and equiv equivalent single axle load or easels um, for Guam's routed roads. Four, provide a planning tool for DPW to use a planned roadway for routed roads and the maintenance and repairs for or replacement. In, fall of, uh, in the fall of 2011, DPW began the implementation of the pavement management system for routed roads. The first traffic volumes and condition of the pavement was collected in the fall of 2011 with a report issued in the January 2012. This initial condition assessment and, and report began in the development of a baseline for DPW to assess the condition of routed roads for the overall goal, goal of having a planning tool for maintenance and repair for the routed roads. In 2014, a uh, second set of traffic volumes and pavement condition assessment was made for DPW's pavement management system. This second assessment was used to determine how the condition of the pavement had changed since 2011. This information was used to further refine the initial data collected and begin the development of a time predictive planning process when the router roads would need replace, uh, maintenance, repair, or replacement. DPW will be conducting a third set of traffic volumes and pavement condition assessment in 2018 for the pavement management system. This will further refine the time predictive process in, as to when DPW will be planning, again, for road re, re, maintenance, uh, repair, or replacement. OPA, the OPA re, report suggests that a pavement management system, which was implemented for the routed road network on Guam, be developed or transposed for the use of the Village Street 
streets network. It should be clear that the current uh, um, pavement management system consists of several very expensive inspection and data collection procedures that have been studied extensively by specialized engineers using empirical methods to understand the effects of heavy trucks on the use of on the U.S. highway network in the course of interstate commerce activities. The DPW reiterates that this type of system would not translate meaningfully to the village street network when the primary use is for residential traffic at less than highway speeds. Even if it were to be applied, the estimated cost per round of collection and, and uh, analysis is estimated between three and a half million to about five million, wherein a minimum of three rounds is recommended to obtain a reliable baseline for developing a good maintenance program. And while implementing a PMS for, for the village streets um, uh, might appear, first appear to be a desirable option, in our reality of limited funding, the DPW would prefer to use its scarce funding to actually repair roads rather than spend the first 10, 10 million to 15 million studying how bad they are. Rather, we have adopted uh, FHWA, Federal Highway Standards uh, for Roadway Construction, applying them as we repair construct, and con reconstruct or repave our village streets. As stated in our response to the, to the, in the OPA report, it should, be, it should also be made clear that FHWA only mandates the use of the um, pavement management system for the, use, for, the, for the U.S. highway network and does not mandate its use elsewhere by the states. Since Guam is not a part of the national highway system, we're exempted from this mandate. The Federal Highway uh, administra uh, Administration implemented the pavement management system for Guam due to, the, due to anticipated excessive wear that would be accompanied by the military buildup activities. If, an, if not for this fact, the, P, the pavement management system, I, I'm sorry, the, P, the acronym is, is uh, distracting me. So the payment management system may not have been funded or implemented by the Federal Highway at all. Mr. Director, uh, as requested, now let me ask you just a, a few questions. First of all, with regards to your statements alluding to uh, the findings of the OPA. Madam OPA, did you have any, uh, Republic Auditor, did you have any response with regards to the Yes, made? the recommendation said implement a payment management system or comparable system yeah. within their means to allow DPW to apply the lowest cost treatment at the right time. So we, we re in, in our exit meeting with him, we recognize and, uh, that he said this is a much more complicated area. They receive federal funding to that. So he said, okay, then do some kind of comparable system within your means. Okay, but the point is there had not been a systematic way of evaluating village streets road repair, and that's what we were coming up with. So let me follow up also. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Auditor and Director Leongro. Thank you for your presentation. Just a couple of key questions, points, because the focus is, first of all, with the Federal Highway Administration, they provide funding for our routed highways, which are the primary roads. And you alluded to something a little earlier with the master plan, the village streets master plan that the, is within the responsibility of Department of Public Works. So are you working off of a village streets master plan? Do you have one in place? We, we do have a village street master plan that was developed uh, back in, uh, actually started in 2009. We, we have the plan, it's a 2010, that's what the DPW adopted. Um, I brought this up several times to this body, brought it several times to the budget hearings, and, and I would like to think that it was part of the, the reason why there was an increase in liquid fuels tax. Um, so in answer to your question directly is, have we, have we, uh, have we used it a, as part of our planning tools? Absolutely. And, and uh, uh, it, we have, I've submitted a, a, a spreadsheet, which again I've set, shared with you, um, top three roads from the mayors, which, you know, um, uh, OPA says it's not really scientific, and they're right. And then the other, the other top three roads was from the Village Street Master Plan. Now, I also want to mention... So let's go, uh, let's go back to, because you, you're starting to bring the mayor into this equation. Sure. And based on the Village Street Master Plan, which was adopted, and you mentioned back in 2009? 2010, yes. 2009, 2010. Has that plan been implemented over the course of the last seven years? No. Can I ask why? Well, we didn't have the funds to do it, sir. 
So in terms of the funding, every year on an average of approximately $5.7 million of Guam Highway Fund resources that is given to DPW specifically for transportation purposes. That's $35 million since 2010. Now, based on that $35 million and having a Village Streets master plan, you're saying that in fact the master plan was shelved and has not been implemented since then? I'm saying, Senator, that, that uh, in the $35 million that you're referring to, um, the, first of all, the last, since I've been here for the last three years, um, going on four, uh, the budget, it's not a line item, it's, it's, a, it's a lump sum budget. And, and so I would have to allocate not just to the highway division, but I've got other, other divisions that I've got to fund. And I'm not even talking about um, um, the work that like repair work or anything like that for, for that nature. I've got a, uh, uh, just for personnel alone, what, what, I, what I stated to the, the OPA was that we get about approximately 3.5, 3.7 million dollars a year for federal highways. Of that, 75% of that is, is for personnel. So the remaining 500,000, if you will, goes to the um, repair of, of our roadway system to include not just grass cutting, but it also includes flood mitigation, it includes potholes, it includes all the, the uh, for routed roads, and it includes whatever Okay, okay, let's go back to, to striping. The, Mr. Director, let's go back to the Village Streets Master Plan. Sure. Because, and, I, and I'm bringing this up because there was a comprehensive master plan that was formulated in 2010. Yes. What are, what are some of the requirements in that master plan that would identify a roadway as being top priority? Identifying another secondary tertiary, tertiary roadway as being second priority onward on down the list in terms of being able to address this based on the funding that's provided to you. To I, I, I don't have the, 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 the criteria as in the master plan, but I can tell you some of the, the, the things that we looked at. We looked at safety. We looked at um, the, the infrastructure connection to other uh, roadways. We looked at volumes. We looked at accidents. We looked at um, uh, potholes. We looked at um, a whole variety of things, and, and, and uh, it was all objective. And based on that, each roadway was, was ranked. So the top three roadways, or I'm sorry, all the roadways, were, the, all the roadways that we had, the, the secondary and tertiary roadways, were ranked, and that was put in the Village Street Master Plan. Um, to do something. So, so, Mr. Director, okay. So you have a master plan that identifies some of these, these priority in terms of uh, allocating a particular point system. You mentioned public safety and health. Yes. There's another criteria, law and court mandates. There's yes. another criteria, population served. Yes. That's added a point system, traffic congestion, <clears throat> preservation of existing infrastructure, cost, and the right of way. So those are your evaluation criteria to identify which village street roads under your master plan that was formulated in 2010 should be priority one, priority two, on down that list. So based on that list and based on the findings of the OPA, that in fact the top echelon of those top 13 items that were identified have not been addressed. So my question to you is based on some of the pavings that have taken place in the last two years, three years, how do you prioritize these roads if you're not following that master plan? We, okay. Sir, we, we didn't, we have not, since this master plan was implemented, let, let, me, let me clarify a couple things. Because if the roadway is considered uh, or deemed unsafe, we will address it. it, it, uh, it for, for what, if it's, a, if it's an emergency situation, we, we, uh, we address this emergency situation. But to, to answer the question, did we apply or did we, uh, did we take a roadway that we said that this is, this is a high-ranking roadway, this is a very severe roadway, and we need to, re uh, we need to repair it. Um, since 20, 2010, seven years ago, we've only fixed three, three uh, uh, um, uh, village street roads, or maybe four. 
So one was, one was uh, 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 zero down, that's when we had the accident where the lady ran over two kids or two people or something like that, so we fixed that road. The, the, the last uh, uh, road we did was, was um, um, Chalan uh, Lamasu, which was, um, uh, I think, an appropriation from this body that took money from, after we had paid off the Territorial Highway Fund, there was about three or four million, million dollars. You set aside three or four million dollars and you came out with a listing and it was called the Flood Mitigation uh, uh, Law, which included that road uh, for Chalan Lamasu. When we fixed Chalan Lamasu, there was two other roads that were, were uh, uh, parallel to that or, or that addressed that, that, that needed to be repaired so that we can fix that road system. So th those are the four roads that we fixed. So, so you're more or less saying, with the exception of that, that critical emergency situation, that the other roadways that are not in the top 13 list, based on the Village Street Master Plan assessment back in 2010, that the department used its discretion to be able to repair those roads. I'm glad those roads are repaired, so don't get me mistaken. We but if you have a master plan, Mr. Director, why is it that the plan, the master plan was not Implement it. You have a master plan as big Because, been sir, I, uh, there was no funding. Like, like I said, the, okay. This, the, the let's, let's go back to the numbers. You receive approximately thirty-five million dollars over the course of the last seven, eight years. Thirty-five million dollars, seven years, Senator. That that's not just for highways. Not just to, to fund these people. It, it it funded everything, including my my chief, my my engineers, uh, my. Uh, uh, building maintenance people that, that do work throughout all the mayor's offices and, and stuff throughout the island. We take care of uh, uh, the... So you have, you have a wonderful crew here. I do. Okay, they're ready to uh, rear in the work. They are. So what resources are given to them to be able to repair our village streets? So um, at this point in time, they are working on... Uh, they're, they're, they have done, done Gilbreeze or, or Lucas Sablon, which we just finished. Uh, we have a list of 19 villages that we're going to address this year for all, nothing but, but Village Street Master Plan. That's what they're going to do. Um, we have, and that amounts to a uh, total of about $3.2 million. For me to, to, to uh, uh, what, what I don't want to do, sir, is that I don't want these guys to go out and repair a road, and then, and then after they, re or they fix a road, um, we'd have to go back in about three or four weeks or three or four months to, to go back to it so, because so, it's not it's So, not Mr. Finished. Director, so you don't... You're no longer using the Village Street Master Plan as a planning tool. Yes, I am. You just told me that you have identified roads in no, 19 you, villages to Senator, repair. You asked me How does we, that link with the Village Street Master Plan? Senator, you asked me, you said there's $35 million. I'm trying to explain that the $35 million doesn't go to highways. I'm telling you how the money was, was, was appropriate, how we used the money. And it wasn't just for a frivolous, we decided for this, that we paid payroll. And, and, and since then, since then, for the last two or three years, you, and I, and I applaud you and I, and, I, and, I, and I appreciate the things that you've done for us because, because I, I said this is road work that these guys can do and they're happy to do it and, and they're proud to do it. And so you've given me $1.8 million in this fiscal year to do Village Street roadways. Mr. Director, we've given you approximately on an average $5.7 million a year. Lump sum appropriation. Now, if you're telling me today that some of those funds are being utilized outside of the Highway Maintenance Division, we're going to get to that point when we get to personnel. But then again, it comes back to what is your plan moving forward, because it sounds like the Village Street's Master Plan is no longer being utilized as a tool, and no. that you're going to it's 19 not true, villages. Senator. That's, not, that's not true, Senator. Please then clarify so that our people can understand and also members of the committee can understand. Sure, sure. So what I have and what I've given and I shared with you is, is the Village Street, uh, from the Village Street Master Plan is this village repair list. Comes up to about $70 million. I'm told by the, by the, by, by the um, uh, Bureau of Budget Management Research, BBMR, that with the four and a half cent, or four cent increase or the 40% increase, um, we're gonna get about three and a half million dollars a, a year. Whatever it shakes out to, but that's what I'm planning on. So based on the three and a half million dollars a year, $70 million worth of work, I am proposing that you adopt this as our 20 year master plan and we'll implement that. So, so that it, then it, it, 
like I said, Senator, uh, and I also said this before, I am here for one more year. After that, I am not here. I would like to see this continue because I, this is a good plan. And so if, but Mr. if you Director, can, you're, in answer I, to your I question, recognize, this is I my plan. I recognize you're going to be here for one more year and we don't know what's going to happen after that. But we are still stewards of the people of Guam's government. That's correct. So that's why I'm asking, how are you formulating your plan moving forward of expending possibly $3.2 million when you're telling me that this, the percentage that you threw out a little early was 79%? of what is allocated to DPW today is being utilized for for, for, to, for fund, to fund the department. You've given me, uh, and, it, and Senator, it, it goes like this. Sometimes, you, sometimes you'll give me um, five million, sometimes you give me seven million from, from the highway fund, the territory highway fund, sometimes you give me money from the general fund. This year, this, this fiscal year, you, 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 you didn't give me any money from the, from the general fund, which is, again, it's, it's your prerogative. But you've given me only uh, uh, money from the Territorial Highway Fund in the amount of uh, $10 million, and then another, uh, um, no, no, sorry. Wait, we've given you approximately $10 million. Yes, uh, Madam, Mr. Director, the Madam OPA would like to inject something. Uh, in our report, and we did, this, uh, this disagreement also occurred with, uh, the, with Director Leon Guerrero, and I just wanted to uh, read from what we said here. While DPW attributes their disagreement to being under-resourced and making continual requests for funding to implement the VSMP, our finding remains that it has been nearly 10 years since the publication of the VSMP and no top prioritized villa streets had been worked on. Other projects have been undertaken outside the priorities of the VSMP. And in addition, there has been no update to the VSMP to reflect current road conditions. So the vast majority of did not uh, get done, and they did undertake other priorities, some of them at a lower level. And you know, the, uh, the dis the, the, the rationale for that was, as he's been trying to explain, was the underfunding of why the many of them have not been done. But also, well, me, and what we said is, if, if the VSMP is no longer applicable or, or no longer relevant because 10 years has passed, then it is incumbent upon them to update uh, uh, a version of the VSMP to, so that they know now going forward these are the ones we will work on, and these are the ones, you know, this, these are our top 10 priorities, our next t t uh, 10, and so on. So that's what we were saying. And what he's saying is it's due to the undersourcing uh, has been the Well, let me, let me clarify area. something, and, and you're absolutely right, Madam Auditor, that there's a need, and I'm, I'm anticipating that upon conclusion of this discussion that we will come up with information that the public can understand in terms of where the priorities are going to be in the allocation of resources. But I need to clarify the record. Your agency requested $1.5 plus million dollars less than it received in the last fiscal year. So this issue about being under-resourced and not being provided the additional resources, that additional $1.5 million could have been applied towards road maintenance is a misrepresentation on your part only because this body gave you a lump sum and this body also recognized that you requested $1.5 plus million dollars less than what your agency received in the prior fiscal year. So it comes down again to looking at the Village Trees Master Plan. If that's going to be disregarded, the OPA just hinted at formulating a plan that would carry us at least for not only the balance of this year, but going into the subsequent years so that our people can understand exactly where the resources are going to be expended and when to anticipate these roads to be repaired. S Senator, I, I want to clarify, I, I did not misrepresent the department nor did I misrepresent anything to this body. Um, with the amount of money that I asked for, for last, when I defended my budget last year, um, we will make do with what we had given the, the resources that, as I was under, uh, led to, to believe this is what was available. But in fact, you, you, you saw through that, because I said 
if you stayed with the budget, I told you what would happen. I even had a follow-up letter to, to Vice Speaker Terlahi indicating this, these are the roads that we were looking at to, to repair, to include routed roads, to include our mandate to, to meet uh, our agreement with the Federal Highway. Um, so it's not just for the routed roads, but also for, for, for the village streets, that I said, the local roads that we were looking at, at, at fixing. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know what else to say, sir, but uh, I, I, I can, I'm, I've been very transparent, and I'll continue to be very transparent. In addition to that, uh, I've not only projected saying this is what we were capable of doing and this is what we will do with the money you gave me, but I've also reported. I've reported to you uh, um, back in, in July, I've reported back in, in December, and I'll continue to report on a quarterly basis, even though I'm not required to. I'm, I, I'm just wanting to be very transparent with the money that you give me. I want to tell you that I, 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 I reverend, it's, it's, it's important, and I'm, I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Director. It really hits at the heart of exactly where the five plus seven million dollars is being expended. And let's go back to that because the Village Street's master plan right now, based on the findings of the OPA report, highlights that the, the primary top level roads are just not being addressed. So, okay, that's being recognized because you, you mentioned that within the last couple of years that in fact you were able to address four different roads. So what transpired in the previous three, four years then, with all the resources? I, I cannot speak to um, uh, can administrations we ask, in the can past. Can we ask the acting sure. superintendent to please the, the, chime in? The five point million, this year is 3.7 that the Division of Highways received for FY18, so we have experienced a significant- What was that amount, Mr. Blas? 3.7 is what the Division of Highways has gotten for this fiscal year in 2018. Uh, yes, there was $10 million appropriated from the Guam Highway Fund, but like the director said, for FY18, um, we did not receive a general fund appropriation, and so therefore the Guam Highway Fund had to cover the other divisions of DPW, is what I'm being told by our administrative people. So three, we only got 3.7 this year. Reg regarding the, the previous years, and you're absolutely right, Senator, I believe, I, George is here, uh, 5.7 funds the division of highway in the, uh, for the past few years. That 5.7, okay, and we have to, the division of highways is just not highway maintenance, okay? It's, it's, it's traffic management, it's rights of way, it's, it's construction, it's um, um, survey, uh, or um, uh, planning and design, I'm sorry, and, uh, and administration. So it's just not the highway maintenance that gets the full 5.7, it's the whole division of highways. And with that, um, the superintendent can attest to this too, it's not just, um, it's everything we have to do from the maintenance of the routed road system, which we're mandated to do by our stewardship agreement. We have to do that in order to get the federal money to continue. But we have to do all our other mandates, which are, for example, coral pit operations, funeral support, uh, village supports, whatever time the village mayor calls for assistance and, and anything, and, and uh, George knows the full detail of that, so he can, he can speak to that if you'd like, but it's, it's just not the 5.7, and, and, and the bulk of the 5.7. So how much, how much for fiscal year 18 is anticipated to be received by DPW from the Guam Highway Fund? 3.7. You mentioned 3.7, but 3 with the anticipated... No, no, it's 3.7, that's what we, he normally gets, and then there's an additional 1.8 that you've given us just for Village Street. Yes. So but for our operations, 3.7 is what we got this year. Okay, there is a 1.8, that's a separate line item, I believe, appropriation that was given just for the repair of Village Streets, and a, and a half a million dollars, I believe, from the un remaining GHF balance, I think is what it was called. So 65% of the Guam Highway Fund is being used specifically for items other than repair of roads. Right now, I mean, based on your, on your 3.7 million dollar figure, and I'm using the 5.7 average, 65% of all the Guam Highway Fund funds that are allocated to DPW in a lump sum is being utilized specifically for items other than direct I, road repairs. I, I, and we do need your personnel in place. I bring that up because your personnel need, and you know this, the equipment, 
They need the resources, they need the materials, they need the supplies so that they can be able to implement and repair secondary and tertiary roads. So in terms of looking at the overall equation, my concern is looking at what was allocated in the new law, which I did not support because I don't believe in further taxing our people when in fact we need to understand exactly where and our people need to understand where the resources are going. So I don't think that our people would, would appreciate, at least from my perspective, that if 65% of all the Guam Highway funds are going to places other than actually direct road repairs, that they would be willing mm -hmm. to give this government any additional cent to be able to repair roads until they receive that certainty. Yeah, but let me, let me move on and, and we're gonna have the other senators answer questions, Madam Vice Speaker. I just want to hear their response about the 65 percent. Is that correct for 2018? I, I just know that for 2018, I think 10 million was uh, was appropriated from the Guam Highway Fund to DPW, um, a little over 10 million, and then eight eight point some million from the TEF, the Educate for Buses for the bus operations. But I believe there wasn't a general fund appropriation to the Department of Public Works. So, so can I can answer your question? Um, in this fiscal year budget, 20, 2018, FY 2018, we received $19 million. Of that $19 million, TEFF 8.1 is coming from the Territorial Education Fund to go fund specifically for the buses. That's, that goes straight to bus drivers. Does not, cover, does not cover maintenance of the bus, does not cover uh, mechanics, does not cover any of that. Uh, so that's basically the 8.1 goes to bus operations. Um, You've also given me uh, 10.5 or 10.6 million dollars. Just say that to round it off from the from the Guam Federal Highway Guam Highway Fund. Uh, of that, we're giving 3.7 uh, highways. 1.8 goes to the, the Village Streets Road repair. Um, we have transportation maintenance, which I mentioned earlier, to, to do the bus repairs and to do the uh, equipment repairs. We're giving 1.3 to them. CIP gets a million dollars. Building maintenance gets uh, uh, $942,000. And then administrative services uh, is about 1.6. So of that, that's, and, and a majority of that is all uh, uh, personnel. 14 uh, out of the 14.6 or 14.7 million of the total funds that we have of the 19 million goes to personnel. Is it correct then that uh, in the past years you received 5.7 av average for the division of highways, right? That's what you said, Kin? I believe so. Yes. And so 5.7 versus uh, in 2018 you're receiving 3.7 from for the division of highways and then the 1.8 for specifically the road projects. But that equals to 5.5, right? 5.5 million, so it's, it's not 5.7, but it's, it's close, let's say so. So you have approximately the same money as you had in 2017 well, it, for that division. Yeah, well, it, but the 1.8 is, is specific for the road repair. Projects. For yes. Specific for road projects, right. and we would, we would not use it for anything else other than that. Like it wouldn't go, for example, um, for coral pit operations right. for any, yes. Right, which, okay. Um, I guess so I want to know for 2018 of the 3.7 million that's not specifically mandated for road projects, how, many, how much of that will be allocated for road projects? As opposed to coral pit operations and everything Pretty else. much not, none of none? the 3.7. Because we have our other mandates we have to do, which is, which is the... Um, and none of those can be lesser priority? Well, the priority for the division of highways is the maintenance of the routed road system. Otherwise, we... The what? Say the that? maintenance of the routed road system, right? Otherwise, you put at risk the, the 15 to $20 million of the federal money. In order to, the, 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 the 15 to $20 million we get on an annual basis is contingent upon us maintaining the routed road system. I'm sorry, can you say that, road, that word one more time? It, it, route, rigor? The routed road system. The, the, or okay. routed roads, well, yes. So are you, are you pretty much trying to tell me that 3.7 will be spent maintaining that system? Well, 3.7 is for personnel, and, and, and I believe 
um, I, my admin person is, oh, there she is. So uh, it, I think this year alone, our operations dropped to, I forget what it was, uh, just about, I want to say $600,000 just for operations for the whole year because the bulk of the 3.7 is personnel. So with, with that, we're supposed to buy all the supplies and, 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 and do the contractual for, for, the, for the whole fiscal year. So, you know, we have to buy ass, cold mix. We have to buy paint uh, to strike the roads. We have to, you know, uh, put out, uh, get a contractual to, um, um, we have a contractual portion of, of our budget, which we, where we rent certain equipments because we don't have a full complement of vehicles or equipment at DPW. Okay, but for 2018, how, um, do you agree, Mr. Director, that um, of the 3.7, none of it will be able to go towards road projects? I mean, we're, you're saying it's gonna go towards personnel, but this personnel is not gonna go, I mean, will not be directed towards road projects either? Well, in terms of, of fun, yes, the personnel, uh, our staff, our HMC crew will do the work. So yes, in terms of that, that that uh, amount that's expended, yes, that goes to work products. But if you're, I, I thought, uh, Vice Speaker, you were asking me, like, are, of the 3.7, are we allocating any particular portion of the 3.7 to actual road repair, uh, other than the other cost involved, which are which are you know salaries and benefits uh, of the crews going out there to do the, the the base work and all that? Yes, that is eligible. Okay, and then just to clarify be before we move on from this section. So we had the VSMP, the Village Streets Master Plan, adopted in 2010. Weren't able to finish those projects, of course, um, due to funding. In 2015, you adopted the Village Repair List, which is like a subset of the Village Streets Master Plan. There's three priorities instead of the numerous projects that were listed in the Village Streets Master Plan. Is that correct? That everything in this village repair list is in the Village Streets Master Plan? Y yes, but the, there are two divisions, there are two categories. One category, as I said, is uh, top three roads from each mayor. So all 19 villages have top three. And is that mayors. this village repair list? Yes. Okay. Does it have 70 million there on the top middle? Does it, does it have what? 70 million dollars the total? 16,126, yeah. Okay, that's that's an old. That's oh, okay. just for the village mayors. All right. I then after meeting and talking about the increase for, for, during the public hearing for the liquid fuels tax, uh, the su suggestion from 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 this body was to incorporate um, um, the village street master plan, which is an objective way of looking at our streets. And I agreed. So then I took the next. I took the top three from the village street master plan, and I, I incorporated into that into that listing. So that's you know part of the, the things that, that we shared with uh, OPA, and so so there is uh, an adoption of the village tree master plan and trying to implement it. That came up to a total of seventy million. This is which, what I'm saying. I'm I'm grateful, Senator uh, Ugin, that you're that you're calling this oversight because I believe that there's a lot of good that can come out of it, and I'm hopeful that that we can uh, adopt that that plan which takes the top three from all of the from from the mayors and from from the village tree master plan. To that 70 million dollars, and that'll be our 20, uh, 20 year plan. Given the fact that you know we have um, situations that 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 need to be dynamic. As for an example, um, uh, you, you look at Biang Street at MTM. People, if it if it rains and they, they it'll they'll skid all the way down because the, the the road surface is, has gotten so polished. So we need to go back and, and resurface that. Or coming down here from Polycurin uh, in Sinanya. Uh, where cars, uh, yes, they're speeding. Yes, they're not supposed to be speeding, but the reality is the roads still aren't, aren't safe if people go over 35, 45 miles an hour and then they drive into somebody's um, uh, house. So, so we can do things to fix that. Those are, again, village streets that, that we're looking at that wasn't <coughs> part of the, 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 it was part of the village street mastermind, but it wasn't high, as high a priority, but we've raised it to a higher priority because of, because of a dynamic situation. But and that's, Mr. Director, that's what we're my, of doing. my concern is that the village, if I may, Madam Vice Speaker, the Village Trees Master Plan has a metrics evaluation Correct. criteria, public health safety, crowded the usage, and some of the others that I highlighted a little earlier. So my question to you is based on the forward moving plan, does that incorporate those issues? Because I know that the public auditor's report, and I hope she can comment on this, found some disparity in terms of Villages being identified 
by the mayors versus some of those with the metrics that says this is extremely unsafe and it's a, it's a, a hazard to the health of the members in that community who are traversing that road, it should be given a priority. So that's really where the issue comes in in terms of what formula is used or otherwise it's just discretionary on the part of the acting superintendent or yourself that says, okay, we're gonna, this is, come up with a list and we'll go based on that list, based on availability so, of funds. So, sir, can I, can I answer that question just so that we can have a, a consensus or a, a complete understanding? If, if the roadway is considered hazardous, it may not be the entire roadway, it could be just like I'm saying in Polycurian, just this portion of it. If that place is, of that, uh, that current situation is considered um, uh, an emergency situation, we will repair it. And so there's situations where the village street master plan has identified um, um, unsafe uh, conditions and we've addressed them, but we're not gonna say we repaired the road because we didn't repair the road. So that's what I'm trying to, to, to get across. There, are, there are, are, are small project fixes, if you will, and then you're saying to implement the village street master plan. When you ask me to do that, I'm saying, okay, we do the entire road. We're going to fix the entire road and, and from, from one end to the other and it's done. And then we can say it's done. And that's what we've done in, with the four streets that I've mentioned to you. Now, if, if, um, if there is, again, a, there's an emergency situation on another road or another roadway, we will address it so that it, Mr. it doesn't Mr. become Mr. Director, we understand. Okay. When it comes to emergent situation, emergency situations that require immediate repair by DPW and your team, by all means. That's where the discretion, that's one of the reasons why we've provided the lump sum budget. But I wanted to just highlight some of those discrepancies or disparities, and if Madam OPA, if you want, so, can so, add to this Before she comments, uh, one, one more point. So my point is that, that, that in, in some of the Village Street master plans that were ranked really high, we had, they, if, you, if, we were, if we were to redo the, the evaluation, they wouldn't be as high because we've addressed the, the very serious situation. And, and as, as, as uh, 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 Senator, former Senator uh, uh, Brooks, or, or I don't know, <laughs> as uh, the OPA has, has, has pointed out, some of the conditions have raised up higher. And so uh, we've agreed when we left, said we, we have to look at it, at, at, at our, our, our village streets, which we, you know, and I, I, I was candid with you when I first came here. So we have done a, lot, a, a, a poor job of maintaining our, our roadway system because we, we never really resourced it. And, and, and what, what I've done, uh, I'm not trying to toot my horn, I'm just saying I agree with you. I think that, that, that we need to address this. And so at the end of every fiscal year when you're, I'm seeing these lapses before they go away, the money gets diverted to highways so that we can fix streets. So that's, and, and, and it's, not a, it's not part of the budget, it's not part of the plan, but we'll, we'll adopt and we we'll become dynamic and, and that's how we got um, um, Hamburger and, and Machechi and all these other street way, uh, roadways fixed. And we'll continue to do that because th this is, as you're, as you're pointing out, uh, Senator Rogan, this is, this is very serious and it's uh, 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 something we take with, uh, with, with, with a, we take this very seriously. We, we're, we're really proud of our work and we know that we can do the community a, a, a world of good. And we'll so, do continue okay. to do that. So, so before I ask uh, the pu Madam Public Auditor to comment, how many emergency calls have you received just in the last year? <laughs> well, Polly Curran, uh, the guy, uh, I think back in November, uh, during rainy season, again, it's contingent upon different things, but mostly during rainy season when the roads are slick, that's when people get off the roads. How many emergency calls have uh, you, did you receive just for last year alone? Uh, I have a, no, I've got it, yeah. I'm sorry, I don't have that with, oh, here. So within 20, 2017, um, we've just started this, so in 2017, we've got 15, uh, roughly 30. 
So of all the 30 calls, you were able to address all 30 emergency situations? We, we addressed it, yes. Um, there are some situations where, I mean, I can, ha happy to share the listing with you, yes, sir. Yes, please. But you were able to address all 30 emergency situations? Yes. So some of them were completed. Other, we have other issues that we need to address. We, we've gone out, we, we've done certain things, and um, we meet, and we have to go back, and that's, you know, um, uh, the report's dynamic. You can, you, you're, you're happy to read, happy to share that with you. Yes, please. Uh, Madam Public Auditor. Going a bit, uh, what we also did was uh, take a ranking of the mayor's, you know, the mayor's top three uh, priorities and compared it to where it ranked on the VSMP. And that's actually in an appendix, appendix 11. And I'll just give you an example. For example, in Manilao, Sergio Cruz Street was uh, ranked, uh, uh, is the mayor's top priority, right? But it was ranked 18, or uh, the it received a score of 18, meaning it's a low score, not a high score. And the overall ranking, is, it's 144. Another example is like uh, in Tamuning, Carmen Memorial Drive. Uh, it, again, a low, you know, that is uh, the uh, second priority of the mayor. But in the ranking, it was number of, a uh, score of, uh, a score of 14 and a ranking of 105. So again, this is where we're saying that the Village Streets Plan may be outdated because what the mayors want today in their top uh, three priorities is not what comes out overall. Now there are a few, for example, that uh, are spot on, like Aganya Heights, Chalon Machina, Chalon Machina, uh, it received a score of 42, therefore it was ranked number three, and that is consistent with the village street plan. Again, uh, uh, you know, it, it has a high ranking and therefore should be done. So there is variation uh, uh, with what the village street plan did, said 10 years ago and, and today. And that's why we did say it do, if it's no longer uh, valid, then do update it so you do have a systematic way of, of addressing what are the priorities to be. Because when you have everybody say this is a priority, one of them cannot be, all 19 cannot be a priority. And, and to add to that, uh, <laughs> you know when you gave your comparison, really it's not a subset of the Village Trees Master Plan. It's just a happenstance where the mayor's top three choices just so happen to be rated for, have a point sc scoring of 41 on the Village Trees Master Plan. So it's just a happenstance. So the new policy for DPW is that you have moving forward a plan whereby the mayors, respective mayors were given or asked what the three top three roads needed immediate repair. So that's your plan. It's not the Village Trees Master Plan anymore because it's difficult to say that's in a subset of the Village Trees Master Plan and not use the same evaluation criteria that the Village Trees Master Plan provides, such and as public health and safety and all these other components. So, so your plan, just so that the public understands and, and we understand, is you reached out to the mayors and you asked them for their top three roads and based on that, based on the availability of resources, that you're going to be able to address that. That, that's not my entire plan, Senator. My, my, that's part of the plan. The other part of the plan comes from the Village Street Master Plan, which I mentioned before, the top three from the Village Street Master Plan. So, so six <laughs> projects, okay. top three from the Village Streets, and then the three mayors. Yeah, and, and, and part of the, and, and as, as Senator Ogden reported, uh, or mentioned, Part of the three may be happenstance from the, from the mayor's side, but the, 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 the top three from the Village Street Master Plan is not happenstance. It's, it's, it's an objective look at what the roads were. And so you're, you, I guess we're trying to avoid the cost of in, incurring another study like the Village Street's Master Plan, and you think it's acceptable to, to maintain the top three priorities on the Village Street's Master Plan is still valid. Yes. Um, okay. And, and, and you think it's valid to, to also maintain these top three requests from the mayors? I, I do. And, 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 I, and I, 
as when we did with the exit interview with the OPA, um, we're saying that we, we, we agree that we don't have to spend $700,000 or a million dollars to do another study. Right. We can do a smaller study okay. or a smaller objective evaluation, which looks at accident reports, which looks at uh, uh, traffic volumes and stuff like that, that, that becomes objective and we can actually uh, characterize uh, um, uh, each street and, 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 and rate them and put them as part of our, our ranking. Yeah. So, We've agreed to do that. We've told her that we would look at that, okay. and and but but we so also said you, that you'll be able to take the six that we're looking at right now, the top three from the Village Streets Master Plan and the top three from the Mayor's, and re-rank all of those, so that we will know, out from the 1.8 million dollars that you're getting in 2018 for Village Roads, which one you're going to actually work on, or from the 3.5. Um, the $3.5 million from the village, I mean the liquid fuels, which, what roads will, that money will actually go to? It won't, it's, won't be even so, close to fixing every village, it, it will, right? Yeah. What, what, what I may, would, may I just give a slightly different perspective, a holistic ap uh, approach? Uh, when we calculate, one of the first things I ask my staff to look at, how many miles does Guam have? Okay, and the number is 1,019 miles. Of that 1,000, and let's just round it off, of that 1,000 miles, 160 miles are what we refer to as rooted road, Route 1, Route 16, Route 20, you know, and that's where the federal highway money comes into place. 688 miles are village streets, 688 miles. So I'm just giving you a round number of a million dollars a mile. That's $688 million. 1.8 is a drop in the bucket, okay? And if, if, if you were to re eventually repair all 688 uh, 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 miles at a million dollars a mile, we're talking a significant amount of money. So how do we eat this, pardon the expression, elephant? One bite at a time, one road at a time. And the question is, again, the prioritization of how, how to approach this. The other remaining miles are on, uh, are within the fence, the DOD miles, and, and, uh, and DOD has more than adequate monies to take care of all of their roads. So that's the perspective, you know. Uh, 688 m vil miles of village streets need to be attended to, and the 1.8, as we say, going forward, is just the drop in the is just barely the down payment to even begin to uh, approach all the repairs. Thank you very much, Madam Public Auditor, uh, Senator Morrison. But if you want to comment in regards to the cost per mile, because I know your team has come up with a formula whereby you're able to complete some of these roads at a much less, sure. lesser cost. So can you explain that? Um, um, the public auditor is absolutely correct. If we were to contract it out, it'll cost us a million dollars a mile. Um, but since we use these guys, it costs us half, half that. So half a million, half a million dollar, uh, uh, $500,000 a mile. And that's, that's what we're, we're looking at. What, what I would propose is that because we've done already engineering work, we've done some studies on these work. It's not, again, we, we go out and we just start working on a, on a project. We've done everything from measurement and then we, 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 we work with the, the contractor. Uh, we've gotten uh, uh, 1.8 from you, 3.2. We've actually gone out with a, a, a bid, um, an IDIQ. Um, we're trying to grow through the, we're going through the procurement process. Once we finish with that, we'll, 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 we'll complete. So what I'm asking is this, is it that we, we we stick to that plan because I don't want to. I don't want to go backwards and wait for our plan to, to catch up to where we need to get to. As as as, as um, Doris mentioned, it's a drop in the bucket. So every step we take is is important. I don't want to lose any momentum that we have. I would like to continue on with what we got, and then as we create that plan, and it becomes. Uh, I mean, I don't know if it's. Does it have to be? Uh, this is just could be a per internal policy, right? I mean, we just share it with you, or does it have to be adopted by the legislature? Or? It doesn't have to be, right? I'm requesting I mean, a copy of Yeah, whatever. yeah. 
and 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 being mindful that our people need to know exactly yes, yes, what the yes. plans are. So, As I said, I'm I'm completely happy to be transparent. I'm completely happy to, to report to you on a quarterly basis. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, and 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 I I look forward. I look forward to um, OPA's review of our of our department because it tells me things that I could do to better myself. I look forward to meeting with you so that you can show me things that 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 I'm not seeing that I can better myself. Okay, we're going to move on to the other subject after Senator Morrison, but then let me just ask you this one question. Based on the funding allocated for fiscal year 18, how many, what, what roads will be repaired? Rather than looking at a list of three, top three from 19 villages, what roads are you working, you anticipate working on during I, this I don't have year? that plan, but I'm, again, now that, uh, you know, walked out with the, with the, with the OPA, we're going to create a, uh, an objective uh, evaluation and we'll we'll run the roads through the hopper and so what's the we'll, existing we'll at, roadway that you're working on today are you working is DPW working on any existing roadway yes uh, and and I've shared that with you as um, uh, we did Lewis Sablon which is at Gilbreeze finished that uh, we're gonna do Sentati I've got um, so that was made a priority so let me ask you based on fiscal year 18 that was given the priority one because obviously it's it's nearly completed, if not completed. So what's your next project? I have a total. Every village has a, a, a village street. Is is a, um, every village has a, a village street that we're addressing, amounting to about three point two million dollars. Amounting to about two, three point two million dollars. Yes. So you have that breakdown? I have. Okay, please if you can provide that to the committee, Senator Morrison. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, thank you for calling this hearing. I, I want to thank the director and, and his team that is here for all your hard work out there. I've I seen, I seen your, your, your efforts firsthand, and uh, thank you all for your work. Uh, thank you, OPA, for sharing that perspective. Uh, I share that perspective, actually, and uh, certainly um, um, makes it clear um, and that you know, the difficult task that we had to make to make the adjustment to the liquid fuels tax and over the the years working with uh, the director who proposed this many times during our budget hearing uh, process. Um, another perspective that I also want to share is that uh, is of the 20 million uh, allocated for highway funds, uh, $10 million is appropriated for non-highway related funds. And uh, that's, I also pointed out that even if we talked about a drop in the bucket, but even if we were to to reassign those monies to the general fund, I still believe it'll be a drop in the bucket, as we pointed out earlier, um, uh, the cost per million or cost per mile, but also the actual cost that was provided to us by DPW over the years that it will cost close to, if, if my understanding, close to a, uh, a billion dollars to execute this plan over the years. So, And, and that's why I also believe is if we were going to start making a dent into these plans or master plans or if we adopt these plans, I think we also need to look if, if we should continue forward with this, this master plan or, or pull out what's, I mean, I'm not saying they're not all, all important, but uh, we have to adopt something and work with something accordingly. We are adjusting rates here, um, working with DPW. Uh, you may not see much with the adjustment in liquid fuels tax of three to four million annually, but I certainly believe with, with the work that's already being done, uh, the proposed 16 miles that it's supposed to be done this year, uh, I think seeing the in-house work being done, the equipment that, uh, that is provided to the, to the men and women, uh, it, it, it's already demonstrated that we can do a lot of this in-house and have uh, execute on these plans a lot sooner. Um, so, Director, I know um, we just adjusted the liquid fuels tax, but I know that's subject to appropriation. I may not take effect, but I, I appreciate that you have these, uh, the, uh, these plants, uh, the administration has already come out with the proposed 16 miles that is to be done. Um, Mr. Cundiff was here and he had to leave, and I, I just want to make sure that we, we do put this on the record, Mr. Chair, that I know he was he here to discuss the Route 17 Cross Island Road uh, that he's been writing about uh, for, for many, several times about how uh, 
uh, stripping or the lining of those roads are within these village streets master plans. It's the only road south of Agania that basically connects uh, not only our, our, our residents but our emergency uh, responders throughout that, that cross on a road. Uh, is there any way you can address that at this time? That's going to be part of these proposals of the 16 miles, the upcoming 16 miles in, in the 2018. For the I believe I believe we're going to discuss uh, the road stripping or striping very striping. shortly. Okay. Yeah. So when we get to that, Senator, okay. I can ask Thank you, to Mr. Chair. I just to want to make sure he was here, and I think he was uh, here to uh, mention that. Okay. But I, I, again, I, I thank the OPA for sharing that perspective because uh, you know that's the. That was the necessary and difficult task of, of making that adjustment uh, to liquid fuels taxes. We all knew when we, even if you reassigned the entire non-highway uh, obligations uh, and give you the full 20 million uh, or whatever necessary, uh, certainly we have a, still a long way to go to address this uh, Village Streets Master Plan. We do. Thank we, you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Morrison. I want to recognize Senator Stavis. Thank you, Senator, for joining us this afternoon. Uh, just a follow-up question with regards to your plan because how much do you, how much Guam Highway funds do you presently have for fixing roads for this fiscal year? You mentioned 1.8 and then you, you threw in another number. So how much do you actually have anticipated to receive f to repair secondary and tertiary roads? Actual repair. We have 1.8 and um about half a million dollars of uh, uh, balance that we're, we're going to throw to that. So about $2.3 million. So what, is your, what are your next three top priorities over the course of the next few months? Yeah. I, yeah. Top priorities. Because I asked you that question a little earlier, so, and so, so I, I didn't think, get any specifics. Yeah. No, the, the question is we have, uh, we have every, every village on Guam all 19 villages have one street that we've addressed that comes up to about 3.2. So we're going to... No, I, I understand. But um, my question is over the next, what are your next three projects that the team will be working on? So, so Gilbreeze or uh, Jigo with uh, um, uh, Sablon Street, Sentati we're, we're working on in PD, Mongmontoto, I mentioned that uh, Biang Street because it's polished. And then the next street after that is Sinanya, that's Polykiran. Then Agate, there's uh, Duena Street. Then Agania Heights, it's Frederico Drive. And then uh, Umatic is uh, Jose Canata Street. Those are the next seven. I, I'd be happy to, I, I think I sent this to you guys last December. I'm happy to send it again. So who decides in terms of the sequence, the, the priorities? Uh, Senator, I was looking at just trying to get 19 villages in one year. Uh, so based on your listing that you're going to be providing the committee shortly that that is enumerated in terms of your top priorities. Uh, it, the way I look, the you way can I have a list it, of sir, 19 the, villages. The, the, way I looked then, at, the way I looked at it, sir, if we address a, a street for each village and they know that we're going to come back to them and now that we're taking on... But Director Leunger, I'm not asking whether we address one street per village. Uh, that, sh that already is your formula. Correct. That is your plan. Yes. My question was, what, is, what are your next three villages that you will be... Repairing, and you mentioned seven, based on that sequence. So you, you provided the response. We just need a copy of, of sure, your report. Sure, sure. Okay. Absolutely. Madam Vice Speaker? Could you just clarify? So the 1.8 plus the 500,000 is a 2.3 million, and you, you have a list of which ones you're going to use. I, I agree. I'd like to see which one's prioritized over the other. Yes. But you also mentioned that those all total 3.2 million. So... So that list will not all be completed either. Yes, it will. The 3.2, um, 1.8 came from the, the, the appropriation for this fiscal yes. year. Yes, 500 two, was Another $2 million dollars came from the governor. Governor? Yeah, the governor uh, got, uh, I, he's, he's throwing in $2, $2 million. Find, he's found money for $2 million worth okay. of road projects just for uh, village streets. All right. So that comes up to 3.2, and that's what we're, we're doing an IDIQ for. All right, so, so what about the liquid fuels tax, the, the, the 3.5 that you're very, estimating? Very good question. We cannot use the liquid fuels tax. The law that, that you, you adopted uh, or got in, passed into law, basically all it did is increase the rate. 
It did not say it goes to DPW. It did not say which roads have to be uh, dictated for. And I think that's what we kind of agree on is we're saying, don't go, please don't go backwards. Just tell us go forward, which roads yes. we want and we'll give you, if, if, we can make the All recommendation right. based on our formula. And, and, okay. and I think that's the way to do it. Do you have any objection, Madam Auditor, to this, this new list if we proceed with that? Again, the fundamental area is there should be an objective way to, uh, to uh, uh, determine, as you said, what is your next one, what is your fifth one, your tenth one, you know, and, until your, your funding runs out. Yeah. So that's really fun to, you know, that's, that's the discretion of, of the director and his, his management team. As long, and what our job is, is to ensure that it is being done and is done objectively and transparently. Just understanding what your anticipated costs are for the six villages that you highlighted. You have Jigu, Pedi, Sinahanya, Aga, Aganya Heights, and Yamatic. What are your total cumulative costs for those particular projects? You have it? You just give me the list. Just give me the list. Sure. It'd be easier for me to give this to you. It's got cost on it. Thank you, Mr. Director. Okay, moving on to the next item. One, one Bravo, one B. So, you, your query or the item was locally funded list of current st staffing pattern with specific titles who are maintaining routed secondary tertiary roads. Um, as requested, you'll find a list which is in the back of. Um, Should be the last page of the yes. The yes, last we page. do have it. Um, I, I mentioned there's three crews. I've only given you a listing of two. The third crew is the the coral pit, which is you know we're by law we have to provide cascal to to funeral services and stuff like that. Um, and they also help. So, with Mr. The Director, road. why would you not provide a complete list? Uh, I can provide of all that. the personnel. I, I pulled it by up. the Guam I, Highway Fund. Yeah, I apologize. It was my my I pulled it off and I was. Uh, um, well, yeah, these are the guys who maintain the routed roads. The, the, the coral pit guys are the guys that provide supplies like the cascajo for the ground, uh, the subsurface work. I understand, but the request was locally funded list of current staffing pattern with specific titles. And you have that. maintaining. Okay. So we can get the additional list because it's funded out of the Guam Highway Fund. Yes, it, they are locally funded. And, but they do not do, they're, they're not on the roadway. Understood. Yeah. Okay. So that, um, I don't know if you really wanted me to read all the rest please, of 1B. Please, because of the audience. Okay. So as you can see, there are three crews in this section. The first crew was listed as a strictly coral pit. As I mentioned, the remaining uh, individuals are composed of 26 hardworking individuals who perform a variety of mandates. Besides the maintenance of the routed road system, the crews have to perform other duties such as federal funeral services support, ponding, base, ponding basin maintenance, storm drain cleaning, pothole repairs, routed road maintenance to include grass cutting, road repairs, and opening up the new roads, etc. As you can see, there are a multitude of tasks we have to perform with a limited number of staff. D the DPW is in the process of trying to re recruit additional personnel to supplement this work. Over a decade ago, DPW is staffed with 1,000 plus employees. Today, DPW is staffed with 300 employees to perform said mandates. A shrinking workforce and a limited budget forces us to do what we can with what we have. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Director. With regards to the staffing pattern, you mentioned that you have 26 individuals that are being funded to care for our routed, our secondary, and our tertiary roads. Correct. So I take it they're all in the galley or in the public yes. room? Yes. Yes. What about your administrators? I noticed that you don't have administrators highlighted in this. We what have is, administrators. What is their funding source? Um, part of the five million. Guam Highway Fund. The supervisors and the superintendent. It's all Guam Highway Fund. I only have the highway maintenance superintendent. Yes. But then we have a we have a small admin staff, which is about. 
five or six uh, for highway maintenance. Uh, but then we also have, um, um, like I said, highways is just not highway maintenance. It's traffic. It's the traffic section. It's right of way. It's it's design and analysis. It's construction. No, no, no. I understand. But I think, Mr. Mr. Uh, Director, I'd like to modify the request for information if you can provide a list of all individuals who are being funded out of the Guam Highway oh, Fund. Oh, okay. No problem. Because there, there have been claims made that uh, this body real has reallocated resources from the Guam Highway Fund, and in this case, we need to ensure that our people understand that this, this is where some of the funds are being expended. Yes, we'll get it. Okay, so there's no administrators other than the superintendent? I'm funded under the Guam Highway Fund. We have an admin, we have a admin administrative staff, yes. I'm not sure for how to how to broach this, but e even with um, um, the staffing that we're seeing with our administrative um, uh, complement that we have at the, the at the DPW, we're we're still um, to do a road. We not only need engineers to design the road, we also need um, we also need rights of way people because, as you know, um, most of our roads or a lot of our roads are built on private property. So we need to go through a rights away process. We need to, to fix that situation as well. So, uh, and, and to do, to fully staff a, uh, uh, um, uh, an effective rights away crew, you're talking what, four or five people? Just locally, yes. For the local roads. So, so who's I mean, funding, who is I, funding the rights away personnel? Right now, our <laughs> Right now, our, we have four individuals in right of way, but are 100% federally funded. So they handle all the federal projects. And none of them are funded out of the Guam Highway. None of them are funded under the Guam and, Highway. And they Fund. they have more than enough work to do. We we have to catch up on the federal highway routed road systems too. So I so can't pull them from. So for also for clarification, the administrators are also being paid out of the Guam Highway Fund. We can give you a full listing of who's being paid yeah. out of the Guam Highway Fund, but it's. But I'm the saying it doesn't is, have the rights of way, sir. Yeah, majority of which no. is highway maintenance, yes. Okay. Any questions, Senators? Yes, Senator Stevis. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Director, um, I just want to clarify on a statement made earlier of the, ter of the highway fund. I think you had said earlier 1.8 million goes towards administration costs. No. In this current fiscal year budget, um, gosh, <laughs> there's $10 million that was pulled from, uh, from, from the ter ter Territorial Highway Fund. Yes. Um, it, there is also, uh, in addition to that, 1.8, again, from the Territorial Highway Fund, specifically for Village Street um, uh, repairs, road repairs. So minus the, minus the actual crewmen, uh, the two sections of field crew you have for your highway maintenance staffing pattern um, with re if you were to separate the administration staff for the other necessities you said engineering work rights of way uh, what what apportionment of that 10 million you appropriated goes to the administration of that division so um, I'm, I'm sorry senator but you, you missed a, a, a significant portion of the how this 10 million was broken down yeah so, I, I just want to clarify I mean I, I have actually been paying attention um, okay so, so just to re reiterate again um, uh, I'm just going to go through that listing uh, our admin for overall DPW not just highways uh, excluding and, and highway what, excluding highways is 1.6 uh, building 1. maintenance 6. is is 9.9 uh, about 942,000 CIP uh, is a million dollars Transportation maintenance is 1.37 right, or 1.4. And, and just and, and I understand, and that's just to clarify the point I'm I'm trying to get to, is regarding the law. Like I understand if the highway fund was being used for, for not only the actual road repairs, equipment, service, maintenance for the roads, as well as the administration staff to make that happen, but with regards to other administrative costs and D, DPW's overall mission. And with regards to what you're allowed to use that, that funding source for in the law, do you, do you believe you have the authority to make that, to make that decision and reapportion that money 
that was appropriated to you by this body to other sources. And, and L Like the other sections that I'm mentioning? Yes. Yes, I do. And, and, and if not, then please tell me and, and, and I'd ask, how do you want me to fund this? These other uh, mandates that, that, I'm, that the Department of Public Works is supposed to I, I, fulfill. And I, I understand that. I understand that. But again, this, based on, on rec what, what I'm understanding in the OPA's report and what I'm reading, just comes back to the, the pure question. If there's an issue with the funding source for other specific areas that DPW has responsibilities for, we have to address those issues separately. But what we do is we just create this recurring problem that I'm seeing, and what we do is we make matters worse when we use funding source and apportion them towards other areas that I, d I don't believe you have the authority to move that money and spend it for. You, the, the money was appropriated to me in a lump sum, sir? Yes. And it didn't tell me how to apportion it, so I'm I, presuming I that gave you the discretion. But, but the law tells you how that money can be spent. It's, yes, it said, it said TEF for bus operations, $1.8 million for Village Street, and, and $10 million for the well, rest I'm, of I'm speaking, I'm speaking to actually the enabling legislation for the highway fund that we have put money into. There's very specific criteria on what you can spend that money for. And that's what, that's what I'm trying to get to, regardless of whether you're given it to it, it was given to your department in lump sum or not, there's, there's still specific criteria on how you spend money from that special fund. And that's one of the issues that we're running into. If it's a funding source for other operations, uh, Mr. Director, uh, what, what, I want to, what I want to get at is we could either, one, address that problem separately, or two, as the chief executive of your division, you might have to present to this body alternatives that if the funding is not determined for these specific, these specific services to the government and to the people of Guam, that you're going to either have to cut, cut hours or you're going to have to cut services on these other divisions because it wasn't funded appropriately. Now, those are the things that we need on the record to do proper, proper budgeting and proper performance-based budgeting. But when we, when we just take funds from one source and use it for another source that it's not intended for, and that way can't do it for law, truthfully, Mr. Director, that puts funding for all other agencies at risk, uh, especially with the coming, uh, with the coming budget. Uh, because when this body tries to move and fund these other agencies, we go back to that same issue are we spending these special funds as intended by law? And it hurts not just your department, Mr. Director, it hurts the government as a, as a whole. So again, I ask you, I ask you for, for specifically for your highways division, what is the administrative cost? Because we have the cost for the payroll for these individuals, but the administrative cost for the, the employees that you had stated before for the administrations for the division overall, I think uh, maybe five to six, you know, do we know what that portion costs? Because we should be splitting these pieces of these requirements by law into different pieces of the pie depending on the funding source. And that's how we can budget appropriately. And, and so do we have that number available? We can get that to you, Senator. Thank you. And, and another thing uh, I just want to touch into, um, again, as part of the OPAs, I, and, and forgive me, Mr. Chairman, if you're going to touch into this in another, in, in another section of your um, agenda, then please let me know and I'll, and I'll wait. Uh, but the asset management plans and operational procedures that you have in the department that's supposed to increase efficiencies, that was, okay. And uh, thank you, Mr. Director, and I'll hold the questions uh, regarding that until we move on to that into the agenda. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Stavis. Any other questions on locally funding, funded positions, staffing patterns, Senators? I guess my follow-on question would be, based on your 26 individuals that are within the transportation section or being funded out of the Guam Highway Fund, do they all have the tools the equipment, the vehicles, to be able to carry out their responsibilities? I think so. I think they, um, we've just recently had, as you'll see in, in the inventory list that you've asked, uh, which we provided you, um, we have uh, dump trucks, we have sufficient dump trucks, uh, backhoes, we have graders. Um, we could use more, I'm sure. And, and, and why I say that, Senator, is because as in any organization, as you know, world-class organization, if, if something were to go down, then we're stuck or we'd have to contract out. And the best way to do it is to have a backup. 
or and, to and have. Director Leonger, you know why that question was posed. Right. We would hate to see any of our men and women here not having the equipment and the supplies to be able to carry out the responsibilities because that's where our obligation comes in. Your next item on the list. So the next item, 1C, is a list of completed pending road repairs uh, for pothole issues, flood, flooding, minor road failures, and other issues. Um, you know, I didn't put that in, I thought I, uh, but I do have it here. Um, this is that listing that we have. As I said, we prepared a hotline. Um, uh, and in that hotline is, and it's as you, you were asking for, uh, what do we, have we done anything? Are there any roads that are, are completed? And so I'm happy to share that with you. Yes, please. Can you explain the list also? Sorry? Just so that all the other senators will also be able to uh, read off of the same page. TJ, if we can get copies made, and then we'll go to the next item, please. <coughs> Mr. Director. And then we'll come back to this particular session. Director Leonguero. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Number two, status and schedule of uh, lane striping curb crosswalk, in, crosswalk painting and reflector replacement as our island, on our island's major roadways. Um, also provided is a listing of the striping projects we've done on major uh, roadways. We've also begun striping our routed roads. We've, begun, we've done work on Route 10 and our crews are doing our out on Route 16 as well as uh, portions of Route 4 down, down in Inner Ohan. Uh, the work is slow and tedious, and procurement of supplies and equipment has been a major obstacle for us. Again, we are in the process of recruiting new personnel to assist in the marking of the roadway system as well as painting the, the medians. Um, new, we recently received an additional striping machine which should help the work proceed at a faster pace. We will, we will also begin remarking the pedestrian crosswalks. Um, I would note that we, would also, we are also in the discussions with the Federal Highway to possibly go out to bid for an island-wide striping project for the routed road system. We anticipate that to go to bid within uh, the next two years on this project, should, should we be successful in securing the funding. You mentioned in one of your, your statements that you're still, uh, the work is slow and tedious and the procurement of supplies and equipment has been a major obstacle. Yes. My immediate preceding question was, of all of your 26 men and women who are in the audience, do they all have the equipment, the supplies, and the vehicles to be able to carry out their responsibilities. So, Mr. Director, which is it? So, so we, we have the equipment. Yes, it's not a problem. The supplies is a, is a, is some, has been a, 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 a problem. Sometimes we, we, we have difficulty getting paint. Sometimes we have difficulty getting um, 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 cold mix and stuff like that. So are you rescinding your previous statement? Because that, that was a direct question asked about whether your personnel have all of the equipment, vehicles, and supplies, and materials to be able to carry out the responsibilities, and your answer was yes. Now be you're saying that as it comes to striping, that procurement and supplies and equipment is a major obstacle. So which? No, no, I'm not going to rescind my statement, Senator. Um, if, if we don't have the work to do striping, I'm, we're going to have them do other things, grass cutting. We're going to have them do other work. They're, they will have, we have more than enough work, not enough resources, is, which is implied is that because we don't have supplies or we don't have the amount of work, then my guys are sitting down doing nothing. No, 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 no. That was not an assertion. My question was a direct question asking whether, in fact, our men and women who are being paid by the people of Guam in this case, whether they have the vehicles whether they have the equipment, whether they have the supplies and materials, and your answer was yes. And then now we're talking about striping. Now, if that statement would have been qualified, there are certain programs that we're, we have challenges getting equipment and supplies, then I understand. And, and we do, but, but it doesn't mean that they're not uh, effective. It doesn't mean that these guys are, 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 in, are idle. Mr. So, Director, so, don't read into, further into my question. It was a direct question asking whether, in fact, they have those things in hand so that they can carry out their responsibilities. They, they now, do. now you're saying for striping purposes, there are challenges. Yes. And, and I recognize that. Yes. Okay, now based on the list that you provided, starting in February 2018 to June 2018, what's your estimated cost for the striping of these roadways? 
to do the, the, the routed roadways will cost us about five mil. Routed roads, striping. About five million for router roads and... No, but the list that you provided. You have everything starting from schedule, oh, yes. location, month, year, and I'm, I'm focusing on February 2018 to June 2018. What is your anticipated cost for road striping? We can get that to you, sir. Um, but we should be able to finish the schedule and, and fulfill this. And you mentioned the, uh, the routed roadways, that you have a plan to be able to address those striping? So we are, we have, I, I broached that question back in November. There, it, um, the Federal Highway is, is not, in, uh, uh, not contentious with that, that idea, actually they're entertaining it. And uh, if we, we can uh, fit that into our, our um, Guam territorial implementation plan, We'll, we'll do so. We're so behind, Senator. It, it's, uh, there, are, there are roads, your, your roadway on Route 4, when it rains and it rains hard, you can't even see the median. Um, there, there are roadways throughout the island. I just, you, you pick a street and, and we're, doing, we're, doing, we're doing a benefit. Um, and that's, that's uh, unfortunately, we can't do uh, uh, roadways um, during the, the rainy season. Uh, and and uh, the process is, it's a little laborious, and let me, let me go through that if you would, would allow me to indulge. Um, if we were gonna stripe a roadway, we need at least 10 to 12 people. Most of them would be for, for um, um, uh, traffic control. And then, then we would have, uh, we have what's called a, a thermoplast. That thing needs to be heated. It takes about an hour, an hour and a half to heat. And, and so, it's, so that's what we apply and uh, we mark the roads and then uh, uh, it, it, it's within a day, it should be okay. Um, so, uh, it's expensive, takes long to apply, takes long to prepare, and, and then if it rains, you know, uh, we just don't do the, operate, the op, and we just go to a different op. I know there are some specific roads that your, your team has done a fantastic job in, and what you alluded to, Route 4, uh, needing striping. Uh, one of the concerns brought to my attention about a week ago, a week and a half ago, was someone asking about when the striping is going to be done for the road, San Antonio Road which so, is one of our routed highways. That's one of the reasons why I asked about your two-year your two -year plan, because if it's gonna take two years to stripe that, when it's already a safety issue. So we actually, Senator, we actually went and did that, that road. Um, we did it, and we did it during the rainy season. And, and now that has, the road that we, because uh, we didn't use thermoplast, we just used regular paint. And, and that road has now, uh, the markings that we've done are for not so uh, we have to go back and, and, and re readdress that. Um, I'm not too uh, today. There's a, there's an issue, but we're, we're we have a long term issue, which is uh, we are going to redo Route 14 um, from from the the loop all the way down to uh, ITC intersection, and and we're as we speak um, we have. Uh, um, uh, GHD doing the, the design that should be done with the 65 percent now um, that should go out we should be done by the summer we should go out to bid by the summer or end of summer and then uh, it takes another year for that to get to, to be complete a year and a half but then would that issue fall under the category of safety and health y yes we will do the restriping and and go back to it we actually just talked about that just recently so okay yes did you chicken. just say you have to design the, stri the striping? What, what, what is it that you're pending on the... No, no. Um, Route 14, we're... Route 14. The, the, the whole road development process, once we've identified the road that we are going to repair or fix so or... So is that for repair or striping? No, it's everything. Okay. Yeah. So, so it, from the loop to ITC, that's a repairing of that road? Correct. It's okay. going to have uh, sidewalks, ADA compliant... Okay. Uh, bike lanes. Uh, so that's separate from the contract that you're hoping to get from Federal Highway to just do striping island white. Yes. Okay. And then can you just explain why do you need additional personnel for striping? You said particularly for striping, but so, currently your personnel is able to do striping. You've got equipment. You want another machine, but, but you, so, are you so short? I, ideally, um, um, by speaker, what I would like is I would like to have three crews 
We have more than enough work for three crews to do road repair work, to include flood mit mit mitigation. In addition to that, I'd like to get one crew. A crew is basically eight to 12 people to do striping and to start from one end of the island and you know, because it, it's, it's going to be a continual process. Okay, I agree with that. And, and does striping include the, um, the outsides of the roads? Because I yes, noticed I, that the new Umatic road does not have stripes on the outside. And, it, and I, I get a lot of people call me and ask me about that in particular. I think, uh, I don't know if it's us older people or others, but they're having issues with the edges of the road. And especially when the edges are rough, and so we don't want to go off, right? They don't want to go sure. off, or they think it's very dangerous if, if when it's raining and they can't see the edge. So yes, we will. We'll, that includes that? Strike we are including that, that uh, as we proceed in the new process, yes. All right, okay, thank you. Any other questions, Senator Stavis? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's a bit, a bit far. Mr. Mr. Director, uh, you know, we were here God, might, might have been a year ago, and I remember asking you a very pointed question. How much money would you need for asphalt to have the road crews repairing roads year-round? And I still remember that amount, because I, I remember that. It was on the record, and I pinpointed it at $10 million. And And while I see here, and I, I've seen these individuals out there working really hard in the community, what I see is that they have a lot of other responsibilities. Per mandate, I, I get that. But what I'm also seeing, and I have to admit is a bit surprising, is that skews that number a bit as well. You have dedicated road repair crews and they do other mandates, I got that. But now that changes that entire dynamic of 10 million being required to have them work year round on roads because they're doing other things uh, aside from repairing and replacing roads. So I'm assuming that that number should come down a bit more. So then can I ask that you, so that we're in, I at least understand what the parameters of the question is. If you're asking me what would it take for, for the Department of Public Works, not looking at our existing current complement of our staff, what would it take to, to take care of the roads that we need to be taking care of, the, the thousand plus roads, uh, miles of roads, 10 million. If you're asking me with the current group that I have, um, or and, and trying to get the complement that I'm looking for, um, what would it take for, for the Department of Public Works to, in terms of asphalt, what, it, what, what, would it, what will it need? Um, I don't know, I have to get back to you, but, but I, I'm, I'm going to guess that it will probably be, be, be around 10 million. Just this 3.2 that I'm asking for the village streets, um, uh, for all 19 villages, I think if, uh, if, if our procurement process and the contracting process and all of that was done as fluidly as, uh, as I don't know, efficiently as possible, um, say I got the contract next, next at the beginning of February, I'm sure we'll be done with the most, of our, most of the work by August or, August or September because we've got a good crew, we can get it done. Uh, and, and all they need to do is prepare the subsurface work and we have uh, a, a contractor like Hawaiian Rock finishing it up with the asphalt. Looking at the crew complement that you have under the division of highways and with the current funding source and the increase that I did vote for, you know, yes, in good faith you, to, you know, again, at, at a lot of peril, in good faith to what you had stated on previous records and to the good work that I know these individuals are doing, you know, understanding that with what you have right now, can go into the current crew working year round on guards rail, guard rail, striping, road repair, subsurface work, and engineering, I'd be okay with that. But what I'm very apprehensive about is a request for additional crew and additional personnel when at least from an executive and managed point of view, there are still many things that need to be addressed. So going back to the listing of heavy equipment that you've provided and additional equipment that you've received and additional equipment that you, you've stated today that you would like to receive, a, a severe lack of operational procedures. You know, I'm hearing today that it takes 12 people to stripe a road with the good majority of them of doing security and traffic control. Those are the types of, de uh, is that, am I correct on that? Yes. 
And those are the types of details that this body needs to properly fund or come up with creative solutions. But the fact that these things are not outlined or made available not only to the legislature and to the public really limits our ability to properly resource you or properly come up with ideas to ensure that the end intent is still made. So going back to what was in the OPA's report, there's a severe lack of operational procedures on what do you do, what does a crew do when they hit the ground and they go out there to do a work. Six guys go here, five guys go here, one guy operates this. That's the type of detailed assessment we need. And there's, there's still no, and I hope, and I'd like to ask you today, have we started working or developing an asset management plan for the equipment that DPW has so that we can start planning ahead in this body and in the executive branch of how much money we're gonna need down the road, for example, when equipment starts to break down so we're not having knee-jerk reactions. Because as I'm assuming with some of the repair equipment, especially specific to road repairs, and right, like the asphalt machine, Larry, you know, if, if you need that this system of equipment in order to accomplish a specific task, I think I, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, potentially if one of those critical pieces of equipment goes down, then the entire system falls short, correct? No. If, as I was mentioning to Senator Uggen, if we were gonna do a striping operation and if the paint striping machine breaks for whatever reason, that pro portion of the project, we'll, we'll, we, we would not be able to execute. We have other, other work because we're, again, very severely under-resourced, and we have more than enough work to do for the entire island. So we would just assume another project. So the system, system is in place. The operational procedures are in place. The fact that we're under-resourced is just a reality that we're dealing with, sir. If those systems are in pl place, why would the, and if the OPA could maybe, um, you know, interject on this, if the systems are in place, why was it in the OPA report that there is no asset management plan that in existence at DPW? So, so you're, you're, you're talking about an asset management plan and you're talking about two different plans. Two different, no, no, sir, let me finish, please. Yes. One is, is you're asking for an asset management plan for equipment. Yes. What we're talking about here is an asset management plan for the road. For the roads, yes. So, so there's, there, there, those are two different things. I, so let me answer your question. So the asset management plan that we have for the, the equipment, we do, we, we've, we've incorporated a, a new system. It's called RTS, RTA. And so that's automated. It, it, it tells how much, which equipment uh, we've, we've worked on, what, what kind of work. Uh, is done on it and it uh, does preventive maintenance and through our preventive maintenance system we see we see that uh, there's some corrective maintenance. it looks like the turbocharger is going to go out on this one or it looks like the brakes are going to go out on that one or blah 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 so we have an asset management system for for our transportation for our uh, heavy equipment we can implement that as far as the road systems we we need to get the the, the data we have that the asset management plan for the routed roads and again, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to go through another year. It's going to cost us another three million dollars to 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 do the entire roadway system, so that we have now three data sets and tells us how much our road systems, our router road systems, are degrading. We don't have that type of money to pump into the Village Street Master Plan, so we're looking for something simpler. We're looking for something that says, okay, um, um, uh, and, and I'm going to be I'm going to be candid with you. It may not be looking at the, the, the roadway as, 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 as a structure more than we're going to, it would be more heavily weighed towards safety. So uh, that asset management plan or the objective way of looking at which roadways we're going to look at is going to be based on that. Again, traffic volumes, um, population, uh, um, accidents, etc. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, so again, to the OPA's report, yes. And if I, if I may, that was a different audit. That was the audit of our, uh, on heavy equipment. And the RTA plan that they were talking about was just starting okay. by the time we finished our audit. So we did, weren't able to really go and check all of what was happening there because, uh, but they said that that was, uh, was in the process of being implemented. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Aud Auditor. Now, to tap into this one more time, Mr. Director, you are aware of, of the new mandate, right, that the operational procedures and how you conduct business is now, you're mandated to, to put that online on your website and made available, correct? Yes, sir. 
Okay. And and the only reason I bring this up, and, and it may seem like I'm, I might be coming on hard, but again, there are some very real issues that, that this government is going to be facing with the upcoming fiscal year. And, you know, if we have to look at even of a performance-based management type budget moving into the future, that's where the devil's in the details is going to be very, very important in how everything is managed and how everything is done, but provides an opportunity to allow for creative thinking to solve some of these issues. Because it'd be very surprising to me if we couldn't figure out a better system than having 12 individuals out there, eight of which or 10 of which are just doing pure traffic control. There might be other things that we can look at and other interagency support that we can look at so that we, have, we could potentially have multiple crews out there being the subject matter experts actually doing the work with multiple pieces of equipment instead of these highly trained individuals out there doing traffic control. Um, and, and to tap on, I mean, I've see, I see a couple familiar faces in here, and I've seen these individuals out there, you know, to, to credit to what your crews are doing, and, and I've seen the work that they do, to be out there on the weekends, you know, in the heavy rains, trying to prevent flooding and flood mitigations on the weekdays. You know, so I have seen the work that they're doing. I just want to ensure, at least from my point of view, that not, you're not only funded to the best that we can fund you, but that we can find other ways so that their talent is not wasted, whether it's doing funeral, funeral security. So, so when we develop these things and we make them available not only to the legislature and the public, we can start finding more efficient and creative ways to use, their, use them and ensure that they're doing what we re really need them to do and to see if we can remove some of the white noise and the other excess responsibilities to ensure that we're prioritizing the operations of our government moving forward. Thank you, Mr. Director. Thank you, Senator Stevis. Any other questions on the inventory of assets? So, uh, Director Leon Guerrero, I'll come to you. In regards to the items that you identified in your listing, all of them are operational, correct? Uh, I'm sorry, which? Your highway maintenance heavy equipment? Yes because the senator just transitioned to, to that particular section. Well, I don't know. We so, have anything that's off offline? All of these equipment okay. are operational? Yes. Both inclusive of the federal funded and locally yes. funded? So you have the listing of both federal yes. and local? Now, based on the lifespan of all of these equipment, is there a plan to either procure additional equipment or to be able to properly maintain them? Um, the lifespan is typically about 10 years. And, and if we maintain properly, and so the, yes, we will have a replacement plan for 10. So how's your maintenance plan then? It's, it's, uh, should be very robust. The, our initial contracts, I think we're ending uh, today, this year, right? Two years? It's a two-year maintenance plan from the vendor, and I think uh, that some of them are ending, or will be ending. Some have ended, uh, like the backhoe for the local and uh, the farm tractor, so. So your maintenance plan is outsourced? It, it, it is. It is. As we purchase, it's a two-year. Uh -huh. With the purchase comes the, so uh, the, the equipment with the two-year maintenance, yes. So now we're going to assume, start to assume the maintenance for the, for the remaining eight years. Any of your maintenance personnel funded out of Guam Highway Fund? Yes. Yeah. They all are. How many do you have? No. 19. No, not vehicle operators or equipment operators. Maintenance. No, no. Maintenance, transportation maintenance. maintenance 19. Because this is not just for the heavy equipment. They're well, also... The, the buses. Buses, and, correct. Understood. So they have, they have the necessary supplies to be able to address any maintenance issues that may come? No. no. Okay. No, sir. And it's not budgeted? Um, the budget was at, uh, well, that's, uh, so w I'm not sure if I got the complete picture. I'm going to have to ask Paul to come and explain that. And why I'm, I'm laughing, Senator, is because we, we, we budgeted for it, we uh, put a requisition in, and then uh, for some odd reason it doesn't come through. 
And what I'm hearing was this last fiscal year, we lost a, a lot of money through the budget, through our requisitions, but then I'm hearing that, that it has subsequently, now we're getting it back in the, the supply. So I, I can't answer that clearly. I would prefer that he does it. Please identify yourself for the record. Proceed. Uh, Paul Spade, Superintendent of Transportation Maintenance Division. Um, the heavy equipment maintenance repair is budgeted through highway maintenance. Okay, we don't control, TM doesn't control the budget, we just give them requisition to purchase the parts, materials, and supply. We give it to them on time, I mean ahead of time, so make sure that we have the parts. But the procurement process is not as fast as we want it to. So sometimes the equipment do go down and it has to sit and wait for the supplies to come in. So Mr. Spader, do, do you have a preventive maintenance plan? We, through, the, through our fleet management system, yes, we do. So more or less all the equipment and all the vehicles are being properly maintained, oil changed, what, the tires checked? If we have the, the supplies to do the preventive maintenance, we will. But like I said, we put it in ahead of time because you know when it's due, so you'll come in on time. So no, but, yes. But that's why I asked the question, do yes. you have a preventive maintenance plan? Because it says after six months, you need to be able to... Yes, we followed the manufacturer standard. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, Senator Morrison, you got your answer? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, real quick, I know two or three million dollars worth of uh, new equipment has, was purchased by the Department of the Interior, right? Is yes. that correct? Is, are those all in operation right now? What are the status yes. of the equipment? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Morrison. Any other questions on the vehicle assets and uh, equipment assets? If not, Mr. Director, if you would like to proceed to the next item. So, um, 5A tests, is that where, where we're there? Any other questions if I, or comments or statements with regards to the village streets as well as maintenance and personnel, Guam Highway Fund? Senators, before we transition to the tests. And the Vice Speaker. Let me ask you, uh, just a couple of clarifications. One is, can you go through your budgeted numbers again for this fiscal year? Yes. 3.7 for personnel. Oh. 1.8 for roadway repair. $2 million, please. Now, which numbers am I looking at, Mr. Director? The breakdown of the, breakdown of the, the total appropriation DPW got for the whole department. Can you just yeah. read through it so that we can get it on the record and who, our audience? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. I'll get a copy later after you're done. Regurgitating your numbers, please. With, the, with this current fiscal year, we've been allocated um, $19 million, um, 10.596 is from the Gen uh, Guam Highway Fund. Of that, we are funding 1.66 um, million to admin services, 900 uh, to highways, 1.854 to, high to road, highway road repairs, village road repairs, and another uh, half, five point, point, I mean half, 572,000 for, um, again, for highways. Um, we, we also have, uh, within that 19 million, we have 8.1 million from the TEFF fund, and that goes straight to bus operations. So of, of the numbers that you provided, how much is being allocated specifically just for village repairs? For outside of the village roadway repairs? Out, outside secondary of the one point, and tertiary. Outside of the 1.854? Yeah. Um, so 572,000? We have 500 and, uh, yeah, uh, that goes, to, yes, for that and, and some of the 532 we'll also use for village is there, repairs. Is there a $2 million figure that hasn't been highlighted? Um, two million for road repairs? Uh, you mentioned that the governor has identified $2 million Correct. for road repairs. Correct, so, so there is a, we had an IDIQ issued out 
uh, for $3.2 million. It includes the 1.8 from here and 2 million from the governor's office. Um, and that once that gets procured or go through the procurement process, we'll, we'll uh, be able to asphalt and do the 19 villages I gave you the list for. Okay, so 1.8 plus 2, that's 3.8. Yes. And then what about your 572,000? So we're looking to hire additional personnel for, to do what we're... So the 572 is for additional personnel. Correct. But the 1.8 and the $2 million from the governor is specifically for road, for road repairs. Yes. That goes straight into contract, yes. And the $2 million, the, the source of that funding? Uh, governor's office. Compact impact? I'm not sure, sir. Okay. You don't have any document, documentation to that effect? Uh, I just signed a, a memorandum of uh, understanding with the MOU with the governor's office that gives me the money to do two things. One is $2 million for the roads, another $500,000 so I can buy um, buses. And, and in that MOA, it doesn't highlight the funding source? Um, no, it doesn't. Okay. I, I don't have it in front of me. I just um, got that, sir. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions on the village? Uh, Madam OPA? I, more than likely, it, it's... It, it could also be interior, it could yeah. also be something else. It's from else. Department of Interior Compact Impact. Most likely. Mm -hmm. Most likely. Well, we don't want to go based on most likely information because, I mean, that's speculation on our part. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, You know, sorry. the identification of the actual funding sources would be very helpful so that our people understand where the money's coming from. Yeah. Okay. Madam Vice Speaker? So, you said the IDIQ is for asphalt? or. Yes. So all the work will be done in-house. You're contracting for the asphalt? Correct. Okay, great. Thank you. Good to you. Okay, if there's no other questions on the roadways and the highways, and uh, Mr. Director, thank you for providing the information with regards to your village repair list. I'm looking at $3.2 million, which identifies 19 roads within the entire island community that you anticipate having repaired or upgraded or expanded within the course of the next calendar the striping the cost of that striping proposal between the road striping proposal yes, we'll give you the between cost. February and June of 2018 because you enumerated about six different areas so that's a, also a deliverable in that regard and then we'll move on to the test issue did you want to read your testimony sure so you, in, in your letter, sir, you, you asked a detailed list of the costs per penalty for any violation. Um, the penalties for failure to stop at the test facility shall result in the violator being guilty of a civil violation shall be fined uh, the following amount. This is straight from the law. $100 for the first violation, $200 for the second violation, $500 for the third violation, and $1,000 for the fourth violation, plus the revocation of the driver's license. Uh, penal penalties for the violations for any of these pr provisions is amended uh, in the amended test law are as follows. So this first part is for the drivers. This part is for when the vehicles or the the the, the, the vehicles are overweight. So five hundred dollars for the first violation and twenty five cents per pound over the maximum allowable lo load. Seven hundred and fifty dollars for the second violation and fifty cents per pound over the maximum allowable load for violations occurring within six months after the first violation. Thousand dollars for the third violation and seventy-five cents per pound over the maximum allowable load for violations occurring within six months after the second violation. In addition, a third violation will trigger um, a civil violation and may trigger the revocation of the violator's business license. You can proceed. So, do you want me to go to B? Yeah, yeah, please. Okay. Um, I want to frame this properly, Senator, so that we're really understanding what, what, what has happened. Um, to implement the tests, uh, it cost us roughly about $3 million, right, to build the facility? Two to $3 million to build the facility. The reason why the facility was built was the question that was asked by the federal Now, Highway. you said it cost us 2 to $3 million to build the facility. Who funded the construction of the facility? FHWA. Federal Highway Administration. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because their question was, um, we're building roads, routed roads, and obviously that was their concern. What are we doing aside from the maintenance to ensure that, that the roads are designed 
They're designed to last uh, 20 years. And you, 10 years to, to, to do re-asphalting, the resurfacing, but basically 20 years is what they're designed to last for. Bridges are designed to last uh, 75 years. So when you take that all into consideration, it's designed based on um, how much traffic and the amount of weight on it. So they're saying, okay, you're, we're not regulating the weight, so they helped us and they, 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 they built the facility. And so that's, I also need to point out that these, the law that we're now implementing um, uh, is actually a little bit more liberal than it was to the prior law, and the prior law was in existence since 1970, which we never um, implemented. Now, with this current law, it allows DPW to actually charge, whereas in the past we weren't. It was basically a, 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 a revenue tax function. So, Director Leon Guerrero, can I, can I uh, step back a little? Who authorized or entered into agreement for the test facility? Was it a requirement of Federal Highway Administration? Was it an agreement that that facility was going to be constructed with federal funds? With a, with a requirement that in fact certain it's things It's not really happen? a requirement, but it was, it's, 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 it's a need to assist the DPW in, in monitoring the roadway system. So we need to monitor the weights of, of, the, of the trucks traversing over the roadway system. So we, we, we <clears throat> and it's eligible for them to fund a test facility to, to assist us. So what were the conditions of constructing the test facility? I'm sorry? What were the conditions? What were the federal government is not going to throw or invest three to th two to three million dollars on no, it. No, uh, well, uh, the condition was for DPW to run it and to monitor and ensure that we have um, a system in place that the, 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 the um, cargo that's going over the railway system stays within what's the, what the law allows. But we didn't have it prior to three years ago. Yeah, so we didn't have I mean, we just implemented it recently, so yes. So you're saying it's a requirement of Federal Highway? No, it's not necessarily a requirement of Federal Highway, but it, it's something we did to help us monitor. And, and, and since then, we have implemented the test law. So now we have, a, now we have something to, to make sure that the trucks that are coming out of the port, okay, or actually maybe even going into the port because you know, they have to travel the roadway system, so we can, we can monitor how heavy the, uh, the volume is that's traversing the system. So just, just for the, the information of the audience and those who are watching, we're now we've transitioned over to the truck enforcement screening station, which was constructed at the port facility. And it cost Federal Highway Administration about two to three million dollars, of which was an agreement between DPW and Federal Highway Administration. I'm trying to find out whether there was a condition to that. If, if, in fact, this is not constructed, would it have implications in terms of federal funds? Would it? What was the nature of the agreement? I, I have to get back to you, Senator, and, and, and look back. But I don't believe that if, if you're actually, if you're asking if, if the, it's an actual requirement, I don't believe it is. But it, it's, it's an asset to, to help the DPW in monitoring the conditions of the roadway system, especially with the buildup that was going to happen. So let, then let me ask you a follow-on question. If the test law was repealed, what be, would be the financial implications to the government? If the test law was repealed, then we have no need for the test. Can you please speak into the mic? If the test law is repealed, then I, I have to. So, so, Senator, if the test law is repealed, then, then we have, uh, as, as uh, Ken was saying, it's a tool, like the asset management systems for the equipment, as the asset management system for the roads, we need a, a, a wherewithal to, to make sure that we're using the roads the way they're designed. Now, it took me uh, three years, two years, to actually implement this law. And I painstakingly taken too long. That, and I'm sure that if I get audited by OPA, she's gonna, she's gonna find men, numerous flaws on my part because what I was trying to do was trying to create a cultural change within our, within, within our, our transportation system on Guam. So our trucking uh, companies, the, the, the trucking industry in Guam, um, they're, they're of the opinion that I can get whatever equipment and I can fill it to the, its maximum capacity. When you do that, you, as I mentioned, the, the easels, you, you do, 
you loosen, I mean, you reduce the life of the, of, of the street. And as you're seeing the rippling effects on the road, all the other things that, that, that we don't like, that's, that, 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 that increases because the wear and tear is in, increase. So, so if you were to repeal the Tesla, I would highly recommend that you don't. I, I, I implore you, please don't, don't do that. And, and, and if you want to, to accommodate the trucking industry, they say they want it, the, the law allows for 80,000 pounds. If you, they say that Puerto Rico allows for 110,000 pounds. If you want to go to 110,000 pounds, my, 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 uh, uh, um, my proposal is that, that you allow me to fix the roads, to strengthen the roads so that it, it'll, it, it is designed for 110,000, because today it's not. And, 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 and the proposal that the, 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 the Guam Contractors Association is proposing is revise the test law so that I could have, so I can, uh, I can fill to capacity so I can become more efficient and reduce the cost. I'm all for that, but the, the problem is the road systems aren't capable of handling it. And I want to throw one more thing, too. Um, if we continue to do this, if we continue to go down that road, Senator, um, that, no pun intended, but we're going to see a severe, we already see severe degradation of the road. I can tell you right now that, that we have a bridge down south right in front of a um, 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 but, naval but, station. But let me ask you, Director Leon Grove, but who agreed to the way station? Well, I don't know. Uh, but no, I, I'm just but asking it, a question. Who agreed to having the way station constructed for the purposes that I, you're implementing? I, Sir, I don't, I don't know. I, that was before my time. I just want to say that, that, that it is a tool so let and, me have, and, and let I me embrace have, it. I understand about it being a tool, but let me ask the follow-on follow question that I asked previously. So are, will there be any financial implications should the test law be repealed? Uh, possibly. We, it, the federal government gave us uh, 2 to $3 million to build a test facility. They may come back to us and say, okay, we built it for you. We want it for this purpose, and now you don't want to use it. Give me my 2 or $3 million back. They could do that. So with, all, so with all the ongoing discussion with the truckers and the businesses out there, the question has not been posed to the Federal Highway Administration? Why would it be? We're implementing the test, sir. No, because there are some concerns out there by our business community about the implications or the impact it's having. And, and you know, this is, this is not, perhaps, this is a conversation that really should be a community-wide conversation. So, Mr. Director, what I'm going to do is, if, should you be yeah. available on February 1st at 1 p.m.? Absolutely. Then I will call for a roundtable discussion specifically on the test, and if I can ask you if you can pose a question to the Federal Highway Administration whether, in fact, there will be any financial implications should this not be implemented. We'll do. Okay. Um, there are other deliverables. There's one other deliverable that I'd like to request, Mr. Director. On the village road list, you provided me just a list of 19. You, you mentioned that you have a list of three roads identified by the mayors plus three additional roads from the village trees master plan. Yes. So I'd like to request for the comprehensive list from you. Here. Okay. Senators, any other question? Um, regarding the test, um, do you, are you convinced that the test law, the, the maximum capacity that's allowed per truck, I guess, is consistent with what the roads were built for, or can we yes. allow an increased capacity? No. Okay. We, so. to, to increase the capacity, we would need to strengthen the roads, and they're not currently the, the, the so current specs, even going forward for building roads, would be the same as what we're looking at right now? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much, Madam Vice Speaker. Any other questions? So, Mr. Director, if, or Senator Stebbins? Uh, th thank you. Uh, this is more just towards his testimony, Mr. Chairman, uh, regarding the weights and the way the roads are designed. Um, would you say that this is one of the examples that we're seeing here, just so it's relevant to the public and they can see that? For example, the highway that was designed going down towards uh, the landfill, and we see the heavy trucks going out there that are overweight and over capacity, um, is, that, is that because the subsurface is not designed for those weights and the roads themselves are not designed for those weights? Um, I can say that 
uh, Senator, that at this point in time we're, we're allowing and we're, the, my, my implementation plan, if you will, is to, is to implement the tests, but, but to implement it gradually. And, and, and um, yes, it, it means at the, the risk of uh, increased road deterioration, but what I'm seeing is I'm seeing a lot of cooperation from the trucking industry. So in answer to your question, uh, initially, when we weren't regulating it, 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 it severely, uh, because they, they severely uh, uh, overstressed the roads. Since then, the, we, we pulled back and, and we're, we're, we're going to continue to titrate them and pull back till we get to the test, test law or, or the Guam law requirements. Now, would you say, though, because that road was recently done, redone down there, heading down from, say, Route 4, heading towards the landfill? Um, would you say, though, that is a good example of, I mean, based on just what we're talking about, a lot of it is, I don't want to say speculative. We do know that the heavier the trucks, the more wear and tear on the roads. But would you say that, would you cite that as an accurate example of what an overweight truck can do to the roads? Sure. Sure. And you're seeing the, the, the degradation of the road. Yes. Yes, yes. And, and that, that was mainly for the public, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Director. I just wanted to kind of highlight that example that people can see how if, if the roads are not designed for certain weights, then we see the life cycle of those roads and those assets really, really deteriorate. Uh, thank you, Mr. Director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Director, this is outside of tests. Is there any way to monitor the, the trucks outside of tests? How does DPW mo monitor that? Um, outside of the test facility, we are actually, because it's not fair, and it, it, right now we're talking about a trucking industry that we're currently, if you will, if you want to say, uh, if it's a penal system, but we're actually only scrutinizing the, the, imp, uh, the importers. Right. Um, we're not looking at exports, and we're not looking at the, the other areas. Now, what the test does is it looks at three different criteria. It looks at overall weight, 80,000 pounds. It looks at axle weight, 34,000 pounds. Um, and it also looks at what we call the bridge formula. The bridge formula, if we were to adopt the bridge formula in its total, then it can go up to 110,000 pounds. But what it does is it says it ensures that we, we, we distribute the, the load over, over axles. And so we're not stressing the road. So we're actually uh, um, using the roads the way they're designed to use. That, that doesn't happen with um, what we're seeing because we're working, again, with a lot of the truckers. So in answer to your question, um, we are purchasing uh, um, portable units so that we can go throughout the island and then we can apply the, 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 the vehicle weight system um, uniformly through the entire island to everybody. So we can't be particularly picking on the import uh, um, businesses. We'll look at everybody and say, this is, it's our roads and, our, it's, and we need to protect our roads and to, to extend the life of our roads and this is how to do it. Prior to the test, Mr. Director, it was just it was just it was just open ended. I mean, right? And I'm just hoping by February first. I mean, I mean despite with uh, the request of the chair, that possibly there is a compromise because this even prior to test, it, it was open ended. At least uh, the 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 trucking industry is looking at a uh, maybe a slightly increase, not to repeal or move back. I think they're looking at some other models out there that possibly could work. So I, I hope maybe and, there's something. And, and I fully embrace it. I mean, I understand. We live on an island. Uh, and I also came from the private industry. So we want to, to load up our, our whatever units we use, whether it be containers or, or tankers or whatever, as full as possible, and bring it to Guam so our unit costs are, are reduced. I fully get that. And, and so, so what I'm, the reason why for not implementing it 100% full on when, when, when the law came into play was, was because I'm giving the, the, the industry, I see this as an opportunity for somebody to build a facility so that when you pack that container to the, to the, to the brim, then you can take it to that facility and devan it, and I can see that as a business opportunity. I don't know. And, and so, again, it meets the criteria for everybody. We, got, we keep our roads, we, we, we preserve the lo longevity of the roads, and, 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 and we can pack, you know, we can re reduce the unit costs. Thank you, Senator Morrison. Any other questions from the Vice Speaker? The, so the capacity limits are for route 
major road uh, for the highways mandated by the federal highways? The capacity, sorry? Yes. The capacity limits. I mean, well, the oh, they're your, consistent. Your they're consistent with the, with, with the federal highway systems. Yes, throughout. The, but again, every state is different, and, and every state has a different. Uh, uh, they look at different things differently, and they and because they say, hey, they want to look at. I don't know, Vermont is for an example. They want to save. They want to support the, the 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 dairy industry. So they give them a pass on on heavier. Uh, so to reduce their unit cost. So what they'll do is they'll 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 beef up the roads, the haul roads for where the dairy, wherever, I mean, and those are things that we could do. There's, there's a lot of options we could look at, but again, it's, you know, like you're saying, okay. looking at it and, 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 and looking at it smartly. But the village streets, roadway capacities, are those the same as the highway capacity? No, but they're, our standards are, they're are similar. They're built to different specs, right? Yes. Okay. All right, thank you. And, and the purpose for the discussion, and perhaps it's best if, if you would hold any inquiry with the Federal Highway Administration at this point in time, and uh, let's uh, have that community conversation on the 1st of February sure. at 1 p.m., and we'll see if the other stakeholders can come in, because uh, I'm pleased to hear that you're open to at least looking at some of the standards and requirements and still accomplishing the objective that was initially set out when the law was passed. So that being the case, we'll have to continue that conversation on the truck enforcement screening station on February 1st at 1 p.m. And I just want to close with thank you to the staff and management of Department of Public Works for your time and participation in today's oversight hearing and also to the public auditor and to some of your team members who joined us this afternoon, to the transportation section, the highway sections. Thank you very much, gentlemen and, and ladies, for joining us this afternoon and really being present to, to be able to understand what the purpose of this oversight hearing was. Providing safe, well-maintained roads is one of the mandates by our people. Simply put, driving on safer roads are important to everyday people everywhere. I look forward to working with DPW and all community stakeholders to find solutions that would improve roads that meet the needs of our community, which I know is a priority that all of us share. Thank you very much, and Dr. Nassizus Masi. This concludes the oversight hearing this afternoon. Thank you very much, folks.